You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ. And Darren. We discuss 2016, Swarm City, and a whole lot of Ethereum stories. All this and more on episode 189 here on January 4th, 2017. Darren? JJ, in the traditional markets, we have gold up to $1,163. Uh, silver's up to $16.40. Oil is down to $53.35. The Dow Jones is up to 19,942. The 30-year yield on the Treasury has dropped just a bit to 3.041. The euro is up uh, buying a buck oh five, and the yuan uh, buys 14 cents, and the British pound uh, buys a buck 23. All right, Darren, thanks. In the crypto market, Bitcoin has jumped up to $1,108, $1,108. And rocketing past that thousand dollar mark, uh, Darren. <laughs> and uh, so basically, all the other cryptos have risen with Bitcoin, which somewhat makes sense. Uh, like Litecoin's up to four dollars and forty cents, probably the smallest uh, rise among the coins. Uh, Zcash is up to fifty two dollars and thirty two cents. Dash has jumped up to fifteen dollars and forty eight cents. Ethereum uh, is actually. Uh, No, Ethereum is up to $10.77, and Monero jumps to $17.67. And one doge is equal to one doge. Wow. Just a reminder that you can tune in to New York Cash Radio every Wednesday night. Don't want to miss another single moment of awesome New York Cash content, including special episodes and bonus interviews. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and more. Excellent. Thank you, Darren. Well, there's a lot to talk about, and we want to get to uh, some of the discussions about what has happened in over last year and how that affects today and whatnot. But let's start out with some news and getting into the, the news that the UK has passed a, a recent surveillance law, Darren. We talked about it here on Neocash Radio. Yes. It, it was some people have called it the most intrusive or the worst surveillance law of all time. Well, the EU's biggest court, the European Union's highest court, has ruled that it is illegal. Uh, I don't know if that's going to stop it from from actually going on, but that's the latest from uh, actually uh, about December 20th, I think, December 22nd. Anyway, a new fashion line of clothing is coming out that is is camouflage for a camera. And what they, it basically is doing is that it, it's meant to stymie the facial recognition software. And what they've done is is printed some like digital camo looking uh, faces. It's more of like uh, like you've seen digital camo. It's sort of like the pixelated uh, blocks of color. And in this in this case, the uh, the shapes of the of the the camo are are like a bunch of faces stacked upon each other, and it really fools the recognition software. And it's it's sort of the 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 beginning of protecting your identity through camouflaging yourself from cameras. So it's exciting to see this <laughs> this latest development. And uh, we'll see where it goes from here. And if they get banned, right? If clothing yeah. like that is, oh, you can't wear this type of clothing in this city. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, I, I don't think that would happen, that it would ban- be banned. But uh, it's an awfully interesting look at it. It's uh, white with uh, basically black uh, pixels, like you're saying, JJ. And uh, uh, they kind of look like faces. Right. A little bit. Yeah, they look like sort of just the face part, just the part where the recognition software would key on to. And... Um, but from afar, I think it just looks like, you know, a bunch of, as, as a human looking at it, it would just look like a pattern. It, it, I don't know. It really doesn't uh, do much. But uh, that's sort of the first foray, foray into that. Um, and moving on, talking about uh, some of the, the, many, the many Ethereum stories, the Arcade City story just keeps going. And so basically... A couple, I don't know what episode, I'll have to look back, but we mentioned or reported that Christopher David was handing over the title mayor to, I believe, Bernard Lapp, something like that, Mm -hmm. and he was uh, stepping down or resigning, whatever that was. Well, apparently resigning was in air quotes when he was saying it because he hasn't resigned from anything. And in fact, the latest information is that the Arcade City brand itself is now basically part of the Arcade City Incorp. Incorporated or whatever his his actual company is, and they have all the the domain and and the the branding and copyright that sort of stuff. I don't know if they've actually applied for any copyrights, but what's what's happened is so the 
the people behind Arcade City, sans Christopher David, they, they wanted to move on from, from Christopher David, so they were asking him to leave, right? Mm-hmm. And that was part of the idea. So you step out, you leave, and, and you are in some council position, and, but you're not in, in, in charge. Well, they couldn't get control of the website. They couldn't get tr- control of, of any of the, the information. And the other big problem was that the, the Arcade City token was known as ARC on the trading and as far as the token name was ARC. And, and this token name was already taking, taken on exchanges for, for another token and or, or currency, right? Another uh, mm-hmm. cryptocurrency. So th- th- this complicated this more. So what's happened is that the, the team behind Arcade City has left Arcade City and has brand forked, as they call it, into Swarm City. And mm-hmm. they have a new token. It's going to be the SWC. And... Or, or, or whatever it actually ends up being. I, I believe that's the, the current current one, but it's interesting to watch because Christopher David has this huge blog post talking about how basically it's been stolen out from underneath him. I mean, in, in not so many words, but this is sort of uh, an interesting unfolding of, of what's happened, and it's, it, it's, it's sort of sad that they had to go to this drastic measure to really get rid of Christopher David or really to separate themselves from Christopher David and the other interesting point, after reading through this, and I read Bernard's thing, I read uh, a, a few different blog posts about this, and one of the things Bernard was keying in on was that when he came on board, he came on board to uh, help develop the version 2. And w- when he looked at the app that they were working on, the version 1 app, he, he realized that they couldn't do anything with it and they had to start over. They had to start from scratch because it mm-hmm. wasn't a good foundation or wh- whatever and I'm not a coder, and I don't know, you know, exactly how this works out. But he, the, his team that he was paying and that that he was working with, were were right from scratch, starting on version two. And so, the the token sale was actually meant to fund for version two, like to finish version one and to build up funds to uh, get version two out. While they're jumping right to version two in Bernard's team, and it turns out Christopher David is going to stick with version one as mm-hmm. he's gotten, and he's going to keep going. And it's going to keep trying to do his Arcade City thing. And Swarm City is going to go in their direction. And they're both, you know, I don't know what's going to... I, it seems to me like Swarm City might be ahead of the game as far as actually putting on a working product. Mm-hmm. Because they have a lot of the talents already in place and, and working on it. But we'll see what happens and what the latest is. Uh, as always, you can check out our blog at neocashradio.com for links to this, the other uh, sources I mentioned. And more write-ups from the stories. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, Charlie Shrem's latest crypto project. So Charlie Shrem is someone uh, you may know from the early days of Bitcoin and BitInstant. And he was the CEO of BitInstant. He actually went to jail due to some, uh, some of the uh, cryptocurrency shenanigans that the government was trying to pull, basically, uh, uh, accusing of money laundering and things like that. Mm-hmm. So he got out of jail. And uh, he, after getting out of jail, he was very successful in some of the uh, the media circuits surrounding the crypto, and in fact in Steemit, he was is very it was like this the community just, just latched onto him and uh, and he's very successful there. Well, his latest project is is a uh, a fund, so it's 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 called a mainstream investment LP or MLP, and it's a fund like an investment fund, and part of the investment fund is actually investing in some businesses. And one of the businesses is a waste management company. Now, we don't know what the company is. It's not been publicly made known. But he purports or reports that the company is 20 years old and has moved 6 million gallons of waste last year. And it has numerous porta potties that they set up for functions and whatnot. And apparently, part of this, it, it's very complicated what's going on here. So I encourage you to check it out for yourself. And I'm definitely not giving you advice to buy or sell. But long story short, there's a token sale involved in this, Darren. Of oh, course, wow. yeah. And now I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. In, 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 there are so many token sales, it's hard to keep track of exactly what's going on with, with each of them and, and, and whether or not it's, it's worthy of investment. So it's, it's this, this waste management thing is just one part of an overall um, investment portfolio that this company plans to, to uh, try to acquire. And, and it includes everything from healthcare to manufacturing, media, uh, digital currencies and 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 all this stuff and and part of the idea is that this waste management company makes a profit of about forty percent, 
something like that, some some number like that, that and that forty percent is going to go into this fund to help buy up other um, assets. Okay, and and part of this this fund is he's trying to raise twenty five million dollars over the course of I don't know how long, to be honest. I mean, this is all brand new stuff, so it, it, I'm sure it's subject to change. But in in the in the course of raising this twenty five million dollars, he's going to buy up all these other businesses, and, and it's going to cover all kinds of different parts of America, but it's, it's bigger than that. It's going to integrate Ethereum and, and blockchain solutions wherever it can. Okay. So, so I think that's the big selling point for him is that he's going to actually produce blockchain solutions. You know, we here on Neocash, Darren, we, we've mentioned, oh, well, blockchain can be used to do all sorts of things. And, and it's still difficult to point to real world things that are using the blockchain and, and successful and, and are used by a lot of people. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and it seems like that's what this project is really about. I mean, sure. It, it, there's investment potential and there's potential to per, perhaps make or lose money depending on what happens. But I think really it's about um, producing, producing r- real results to point to and say that this is a working solution. This is a working model. We can export this model. Right. Yeah. And and that's and and then by being broad and saying we're going to do it in and well waste management might be the the easy and most profitable one right now based on his information, but like to do it in manufacturing, to do it in healthcare and all these other places, I think it's a really smart idea if you want to sell the idea of cryptocurrencies. So, so what would this actually add? What what's the value added that blockchain brings to like this waste management company? That's the thing. I don't I don't exactly know. I don't exactly this. All of this stuff was very new, and I, mm-hmm. I I tried to read as much as I could, and it's definitely something we we need more information on. But I think part first part is that there's there's the token sale for the actual ownership of this fund to buy into this fund and to mm-hmm. invest in this fund, and then there's of course payouts based on what your token ownership is and blah 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 and all that details. I I don't know how waste management is going to uh, uh, factor in blockchains. And and whatnot, but this I don't know. Okay, I, I we're we're still it's still very difficult because we don't even know what the company is. We don't know what their name is. We don't you know we know they're in Michigan. Okay, and that's about it. So as we get more information, we'll definitely try to talk about that. And uh, moving on though, one more one more uh, Ethereum story. Just a lot of uh, cool news for Ethereum, or important news, I should say. Uh, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong has recently published a blog article that signals his lack of enthusiasm about the future of Bitcoin. He states that Bitcoin, quote, has not become a scalable payment network, unquote. And uh, he's pointing to, of course, uh, transaction fees and times and things like that. Um, The blog post ends with an idea that Ethereum may overtake Bitcoin as a payment processor as well as its current role as a token generator, noting that the tokens themselves are, are adding value in a variety of different ways, and that's has nothing to do with the actual currency exchange component. Mm-hmm. So, um, really, I I think it's it's very telling. I mean, Coinbase is one. You know, Coinbase and, and BitPay they were both uh, companies that have been around for a, a couple few years. And you know, it's 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 something he he's a lot of what Brian says about Bitcoin and its sort of failings. Right. Point point to the open payment network. Like he uses that term to describe how the open payment networks and digital currencies can solve a lot of problems. But I think what he's not saying is is, is important here. He's not saying that Bitcoin isn't an open payment network because he doesn't have to, right? But that's sort of what he's implying is that Bitcoin isn't an open payment network. It's yeah. controlled by core mm-hmm. and it's it's not scalable. So I think I think we're seeing just sort of like the beginning of the the uh, the tip of the iceberg, if you will, of companies deciding that Bitcoin isn't isn't worthy mm-hmm. anymore. And, and yeah, well, there's so, so, he says there's still value there. He recognizes all that. And I'm not to not to say that he shouldn't, um, you know. Yeah. So well, I, I what I've been reading says that he's basically taking votes on what currency to add next. Right. And uh, he, he, he has made statements uh, along the lines of uh, he wants to see Coinbase not be a Bitcoin company, but be a uh, more of a, uh, a cryptocurrency company. Right. 
Uh, so, uh, th- yes, there's definitely some retooling going on here. And I would, I, I do conclude that uh, the retooling is strongly influenced by the fact that the Bitcoin network has failed to scale. Right. So, uh, so yeah. So, well, well and we're also, to them. yeah, we're also coming up on the date. I believe it's the 13th. I'm not certain. I'll look into it mm-hmm. for next week, but the, um, the Tokyo or the not the, the Chinese minor agreements, mm-hmm. um, the Shanghai agreement uh, expires or, or is supposed to conclude by, I believe, the 13th of this month. And that's when I, I expect to see Chinese miners declare support for either Bitcoin Unlimited or Bitcoin Classic or, or any of the any of the block size two megabyte uh, solutions out there. Right. And so I think. Like this is sort of like this week is sort of like oh Coinbase oh, and and maybe some other news about Ethereum growing or or other coins like Zcash and and Monero have their their values gone up you know Zcash has finally hit its bottom mark and started creeping up again but Monero is doing really well uh, I don't know if it's just speculation or if there's actual use and and value being created in in both of those but I think looking at the future, Coinbase is uh, is thinking right in that don't put all your eggs in the Bitcoin basket. Right. So, so we'll, it's going to be great for crypto users because then you could pay if if they did full integration, you would be able to pay all these sites that already use Coinbase with whatever currency you wanted. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that it's it's it, I think it's a good move on his part. Uh, yes, definitely hedge your bets. Yep. Well, so let's take a moment and talk about uh, look back at 2016. And I think what's important here is that you know, we've we've done the show for over three years now, Darren, and you know that a lot has changed. A lot has changed across the cryptocurrency landscape from basically Bitcoin and Litecoin, and then a whole bunch of altcoins that really don't matter to Bitcoin, kind of playing a minor, a more minor role, but still being that core fundamental, um, blockchain technology. Uh, so let's, let's just, so I'm, as a reference, I found a, uh, top six stories from 2016 as told by Bitcoin magazine on the Bitcoin magazine, uh, obviously on their website. And I'm just sort of looking at this and I wanted to talk about it and they go in, in reverse order. So I, I will as well. The sixth story, I think I would agree with. Definitely IRS orders Coinbase to hand over customer data. Definitely a big story this mm-hmm. year because up until this point, there haven't been a whole lot of hand over your data to uh, Bitcoin companies. Right. So and, and Coinbase being such a large company is very important to note. I think this is going to be something you'll see across all yeah. the other companies, all, see, yeah. all the other com- any any Bitcoin company out there is going to start getting these letters from the IRS. Mm-hmm. Um, number five was the rise and fall of the DAO. Wow. Yeah, that huge was story. Big, yeah, yeah. And, and and Darren and I, I I want to just once again toot our own horn in that we were very skeptical about the DAO and and the token sale mm-hmm. when it was happening and before it was happening, and it's it's more from. I guess uh, early experience and seeing a lot of the hype behind some of the altcoins that initially came out. I mean, when when we first started the show, there was new altcoins coming out all the time, and there was some hype behind this one or that one or whatever nuance. This one was different, mm-hmm. and it, it's sort of like we we saw that this hype being replayed a bit in the Ethereum universe with the DAO, and it it just didn't seem like it. it I don't know. It was just so out of right field and, and, and just chaotic that I, I, I wish I wish uh, a DAO would work you know and and I think there are you know in a, in a way uh, you know, Amanda Johnson mentioned how Bitcoin is a, is sort of like a DAO it's not very decentralized at the moment but you know the other coins are sort of DAO and that the community using it is a sort of decentralized autonomous organization right so uh, moving on, number four, the Bitcoin cloud services uncovered as cloud mining Ponzi scheme. Um, this, I don't, I don't really agree with this exact story, but the Ponzi schemes as a general uh, story of 2016, yes, there's been a lot of Ponzi schemes that we talked about and we've warned about numerous scams from OneCoin to the newest one being Mavro and 
people should really, and once again, I think this goes back to the previous ones with the AO, is that a lot of people are jumping onto things and they're not doing their due diligence, they're not doing their research, and this is biting, you know, biting them in the butt. Uh, number three, Craig writes Satoshi Nakamoto saga. Well, again, this isn't just obviously in 2016 it was Craig Wright, but this has been going on, and the whole the whole hype that surrounds Satoshi Nakamoto. What I really think a lot of this is, and we'll go with number two is the happening. Mm-hmm. The same thing on all of these is that the journalists behind crypto magazines have nothing to write about, and so they're just writing fluff stories about some hype. Mm-hmm. I think that's what a lot of this this is. And I, I'm not really trying to insult Bitcoin Magazine, but I'm I'm just pointing out that the happening wasn't a big story, right? Because it, it the happening has already happened before. Yeah, it's the second time, and uh, the first time it went off without a hitch. This time it went off without a hitch. It'll probably continue to do that, right? Uh, without any huge changes to the protocol. Uh, I mean, we we covered it right beforehand. Some of the doom and gloom surrounding it was, oh my god, the, the miners are all of a sudden going to. Um, lose money. You know, the miners are going to shut down, and then the network is going to be at half the hashing yeah. rate. And then- I, I heard people say that, but they've known that this is going to happen for quite some time. And and people that have money don't lose it that easy, and they're not going to invest in these big, huge computer chips if they know that when after it halves, it won't be profitable. So, uh, so I mean. Yeah, those those concerns were way overblown, and uh, uh, yes, uh, went off without a hitch. It'll probably continue to do that. Right. Well, and the top story, according to the Bitcoin Magazine uh, article, would be the Ethereum hard fork and birth of Ethereum Classic, which I think yes, that is, that is the top story, and and there's multiple reasons why. One, yes, there was some controversy. And all the stuff that surrounded it, it, it wasn't a clean break. And this is what happens in a clean break is that you end up with two cells, right? Like imagine like a, a cell arguing with itself and deciding and it's growing, it's growing, it's growing too big. And then all of a sudden it splits. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think that's natural and it's normal. But I think the birth of Ethereum Classic actually was really important for the community overall. Because mm-hmm. it, it, it's like... It, it it removes the finality of a lot of the, the forks that might happen or the problems. You know, if, if, uh, if let's say Dash tomorrow, the uh, the algorithm messed up and it started producing weird blocks or, or hacked blocks in, in, in this crazy chain, well, the, the people who could maybe salvage what was left of the chain and build a second one away from that, you know, that might be one solution. Um, they... I really like what happened with Ethereum Classic because it was sort of like it wasn't the majority over the minority. It wasn't your vote doesn't matter, right? Mm-hmm. It was your vote matters. That's right. And I think that's really important going forward is that we see the birth of your vote mattering because if if you vote this way, then you can still go that way. And I think while this is a very extreme example of that, I think this is going to happen a lot of different ways. Now we talked about the brand fork in the in the beginning of the show with Arcade City, right? The the whole idea of you can have Arcade City, we're gonna do this Swarm City, right? Like mm-hmm. like both of our votes matter. Because we're both gonna be able to do our own thing, and then the market will decide which one is is you know better. And and it doesn't even have to come down to that. They can both be good and they can both service the market fine and compete. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't have to be one team has to lose. Right, right. It's it's it, and in fact, winning and losing can be determined by the loot, the 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 actual user, the individual user. Well, you know, like like a person of the. So getting back to Ethereum Classic, someone who helped make that chain happen would count themselves a winner. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So, I think this is really good news for the future of this technology. Just looking at at how the community reacts to these situations. Now, um, Darren, what were some of your uh, thoughts about the, the last year? I mean, they, there was a lot going on with the central banks. There was a lot of uh, negative interest rates that happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, Switzerland has gotten rid of private blank- uh, banking by now. Right, right. So, I mean, there's lots of changes that happened this last year in, uh, in just the, 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 macro, uh, the macro outlook. 
in, in central banking. Yeah, there, there, there was a lot. Uh, we saw the rise of uh, or the fall of negative interest rates. Uh, and, uh, of course, it started before this year, but uh, we've seen it uh, transferred over to the retail level and uh, in certain countries. And uh, we've seen uh, more of this quantitative easing type of viewpoint. Uh, we've seen a lot of it from uh, Europe, and uh, we've, we've seen the end of it in, in America, uh, the United States, uh, at least temporarily at at the end of the year, um, we've seen uh, all kinds of things. So yeah, and I think uh, the other thing uh, going on this year that was is big. Well, Greece happened, I believe, last year. Right. But following Greece, you know, there was the Brexit. Of course, that mm-hmm. was slightly different. But then uh, Spain is having its financial problems, um, and then Italy, mm-hmm. and 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 sort of the the idea of of leaving the euro. Mm-hmm. And leaving the EU is now a very prime thought. You mm-hmm. know, now it, now it's not just hearsay. Now it's like you're, you you can fit in. You can leave the EU and still fit in. Right. Well, Britain still has to follow through. Right. With their exit, but uh, yeah, that, that's definitely here. We have a, a case scenario of uh, leaving this type of union uh, peacefully without. Uh, with, uh, you know, in the past, there's been wars over this type of thing. Right. And uh, so, uh, yeah, and maybe that's a good model that can be emulated. And I think uh, another big thing this year, and, and maybe going to, to the other side of the spectrum, the negative, uh, a lot of, of crypto uh, hacking, not not really hacking, uh, there's the phone hacking that's been going on, and that's still really prevalent. If you have your phone set as your recovery device, you will probably want to to uh, look into the safety security measures you can implement to protect yourself because phones are being used to steal Bitcoins still even to this day. Uh, But the other, the crypto locker and a lot of software this year, uh, malware and and hackware that was, was, was used to lock up and encrypt files and then demanding a ransom Mm -hmm. to unlock your files. And this was very prevalent uh, at the beginning of the year and, and throughout the year. And it's still, Yeah, then and, and we we've, we've seen it become mainstream. I mean, in my job, where there was a training that uh, I went to that that told us how not to click on links and get a crypto locker situation happen. Wow! So, uh, so, so you, had a, you had a briefing like this at your at your everyday job. Yeah, my everyday job. But you know, they just said, you know, here's computer security, and and basically one little segment within the computer security was, oh, get your computer lock. I mean. I mean, the main thing was you just don't uh, you turn off the computer right away and you and you let somebody else deal with it right away. And you, you uh, want to disconnect it from the network as soon as possible because you don't want it to spread to nearby computers right. or computers on the network. So, wow. Well, so, hey, you know, that that's good. I, I think they really I don't think enough training is put into security, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think there's so many holes in just everyday usage of people not understanding the risks they're, yeah. they're clicking on. You can come up with whatever technological uh, solutions you want for security, but at the same time, they're, they're the, the weakest link is going to be your people. So, uh, you, so yeah, you've got to clear, uh, get your people that are working in the project or whatever, or on whatever project or whatever to understand what they need to do to be secure in their workplace or in their, in their own computing. Well, one, one, uh, I have two final thought, two final things to talk about for the year in review. Uh, then the second to last one is China. Now, at the beginning of the year, China stock markets plummeted. Right. I mean, they they crashed hard. In fact, stock markets around the world crashed hard at the beginning of last year, if you remember. Mm-hmm. And the the Chinese uh, haven't really recovered. They decoupled the yuan from the dollar mm-hmm. and let it let it float. Their reserves have been depleting quickly as they've been trying to shore up the yuan, yuan's value against the dollar, and as they're dumping foreign reserve currencies to keep that that afloat. Um, the other big things is the crackdown in China on dissidents, on activists, mm-hmm. on not only that the Sesame Credit. Yep, yep. I mean, there's been a lot of stories about controlling people in China and and censorship and. Uh, it's it's just a, a real strong-handed attempt at at uh, keeping a society of, of billions of people in line. Mm-hmm. So and then that's a, that's a big thing too, because so much of the mining is done in China, right? And so 
the the other big story, and I think it might have a part to play with Bitcoin, is that um, foreign companies that are are working in China have new regulations to worry about regarding what they can and can't do. As the the, the most recent thing I've I've been reading is that the, uh, the the a party wants to control more and more of the actual companies. So. Uh, China is is definitely looking like a sore spot just for a large variety of reasons, but it's also a bright spot because Bitcoin miners in China are making Bitcoin network very secure. Right. So it's like a double-edged sword. of if, if In the darkest place, you will find the most freedom. Mm-hmm. So, uh, And the final point, bringing it back home for the year in review of 2016, is here in Neocash Radio, we have had a few different changes. We've moved to a new studio. Yep. We've new got day. a new day, new co-host, new co-host Randy, who's will be gone for six weeks. Who's, who's gone for another four episodes after this one? Yeah, I think there you go. And um, so yes, a, a bunch of good things have happened, and, and we're still under construction for the video studio. The plans are still to get a video podcast going. And Darren, you just saw the room. There's there's only a, few, a little bit of drywall left to put up, and yeah, and it's coming along. Yeah, it's a lot of work, but we are, are really enjoying the experience. As, as always, uh, just a reminder that you can tune in to Neocache Radio every Wednesday night. Don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocache content, including special episodes and bonus interviews? Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, LBRY, and more. Well, thanks again for joining us, uh, Darren. This is our first episode of the new year. And, uh, you know, Happy yeah. New Year. Happy New Year. So uh, let me get this awesome music. Oh, yeah. That's Whoa. a little loud. <laughs> so thank you for joining us on Neo Cash Radio. Uh, this is JJ. This is Darren. For Neo Cash Radio, we discuss the future of money today. NeoCashRadio.com. <laughs>